think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. For 30 years, Keith Charles was a police officer, but he was a copper like no other. Somewhere. He claimed to be to able to talk drain. to the dead. When I was at the police station, your son contacted me and that he tells me he's now in heaven. No longer a policeman, he's now a psychic investigator helping detectives around the world. I'm walking in here and straight away I'm aware of spirit, straight away. Jings were burnt here, cat was thrown over that way. Either the body or the weapons here that was used to kill him. In America, the body of a murder victim is missing. Tonight on Real Life, can the psychic detective find him? I said to you originally that you've walked over my body and I just feel this is, to me, if not the prime murder scene, I just want to call it a murder scene. This isn't it. For many, it's a belief based on hope rather than proof. You know, I don't think we want to think it finishes here and now, do we? And I suppose everyone's got this life after death interest, haven't they? Thousands of people flock to this man, seeking evidence of an afterlife. He claims that God has given him a gift to communicate with those who have passed over to the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And welcome to a psychic evening of clairvoyance. A former detective constable who's now one of Britain's most popular psychics. Please put your hands together for the man you've all been waiting to see, the amazing Keith Charles. I'm putting myself in a shop window where people are going to come along and for whatever reason, they can take the mickey, they can decry what I do. That's fine, that's their opinion. I don't have a problem with that. I've got broad shoulders. I spent 30 years in a police force where I've dealt with all types of things. To me, this is just a part of my life. As a detective, Keith had to fit his psychic shows around his job. Now retired from the police, he's spreading the gospel full time. Do I consider myself an entertainer? Um, not really, no, I don't. The Regent Centre, Christchurch, one of 40 dates on this year's tour. We have a cup of tea. Travelling with Keith is his promoter, oh, Dell. A former market oh, trader okay. is now a veteran of the psychic circuit. Because you, you were responsible for promoting Doris Stokes for a while, weren't yes, you? Yes, I was. On the very, Palladium? Very, uh, no, I wasn't on the Palladium one. No, that wasn't to do with me. I promoted it when there was no money in it. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The understage bar is now open. The bar's open. Come on, then we go. As an ardent spiritualist, I've said, no, we're not here for entertainment. But quite honestly, after about 30 years, I can see that there is a certain amount of entertainment in it. But it's also our religion. Take 10 of your friends, sit down and say, how many people here believe they may have seen a ghost, had a ghostly experience? And I would guarantee one out of 10 will have had some form of experience. And we treat this very seriously. Keith has adopted a rather unique style, some reason, somewhere between Mystic Meg and Frank table. Butcher. And you spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I do indeed. And you drink a lot of tea. Yes, I do. Which you've been told you shouldn't do because of... That's... <laughs> okay, this is what they're telling me. I'm sorry we're getting a bit... Quite true. 
and you're always looking out your kitchen window, Marge. Yes, I am. Yeah, because you're quite interested in what's going on. Yes. <laughs> what they're trying to tell me is... Oh, I'll tell her that. Opposite where you sit... Yes. Right? Above the knife box drawer, you keep your medicines. That's true. And your father's saying, why do you keep them if you're not going to take them? Well, I do take them, but... Uh, excuse me. I've... I'm not going to have a row with you now. I've, I've only just met you, and I've, uh, I've met half the family, you. We're having an argument. I've only come to tell you what he's telling me. I'm into um, spiritualism, spiritualism and all things like that, and it just really interests me the way that he can get so much evidence there. I've had, I don't know, psychic experiences myself, so it's nice to hear somebody on his level. So, yeah, I think we want to be, have a bit of optimism in our lives, and this provides it. But all I want to say is there's a lot of love here. Thank you. All right, there's a great deal of love from heaven. They're concerned about you. All right? They don't think much of the curtains you've just put up <laughs> in the kitchen. And your father is saying to me, look, tell her I love her. You understood it. Thank you. Well, when, when Keith was a boy, we would sometimes hear him chatting away and we'd say, I'll oh, talk to my friend. And there was, it was an imaginary friend and we didn't realise then that it was going to develop into being a medium like he is now. He had quite a few imaginary friends, didn't he, mm. when he was yeah. younger. Keith believes it was the start of his psychic awakening. He was just eight years old. But he didn't learn to understand the visions and messages he was getting until he joined spiritual development classes many years later. I might literally see Uncle Fred as a silhouette. If Uncle Fred had a deformity in his right hand, he may show me his right hand and, and there may be two fingers missing. Um, and he was obviously trying to emphasise that so I can give it to the individual. Now, if Uncle Fred was a Yorkshireman, I might hear him talking with an accent. So sometimes I will hear a voice. Sometimes it may be a series of pictures accompanied by words, but most of the time it is a voice that I hear talking to me. Did you ever hear him talking to his imaginary friend? No, you could hear him talking upstairs, you know, if he was upstairs sort of thing, you'd hear him talking. And you say you're talking to him, he said, it's all right, Mum, it's only my friend. And then that was it, and we used to think, oh, leave him alone, he'll be all right sort of thing, you know. I have a Scottish link here, um, and um, it's not a very pleasant link, quite honestly. I've got a gentleman who was stabbed to death, and um, he's talking, I'm not sure if he's Scottish or he links with Scotland, so I need to ask him, forgive me. Um, there's not a lady here who is Rose or... No, no. Hang on, let me go back. Does somebody live here at Bramer? Hello, you're at the back. What's your name? Sorry? Rose. Rose. Yes. You're Scottish? Blimey. He's got something right, the boy. You know a young man that was stabbed to death because he is telling me, first of all, he spoke about Scotland, he spoke about Rose. He's telling me that I need to go back in time for this. Would you have lived in a, a block of flats, please? No. Are you sure? Let me describe something to you. Tell me where you're from. Glasgow. Glasgow. Right. He's going north side of Glasgow, northeast. Is that an area that you would have lived in? Yes. Yes. And I did live in a block of flats when I lived there. <laughs> That's okay. I can hear something that sounds like Braemar. Braemar. B-R-A-E-M-A-R. Somebody in your family would have worked on railways or something, or the buses, because I can... He's talking about... Does that make sense to you? Yes. Who was it? My dad. Yeah. Because your dad helped this young man. Now, does this come back to you? Have you remembered the man that was stabbed outside the pub? I know what I've told you 
is 100% correct. We've never met. Look, I want to say, quite honestly, from this young man, please say thanks. He was the only man who did anything. And it has been my pleasure, not mine, Robbie's. I've just said, what's your name? He said, Robbie. So we've got Robbie McAlevey or McAvinney. And he says, I was 24. And you will find out this is correct. Thanks, Rose. Thank God you. bless you. Thanks very much. Tonight's takings will total more than two and a half thousand pounds. But Keith and Dell insist that all profits must go back to their spiritualist church. No, Daddy, I've been to see a psychic tonight and he, he had a message from me from some lad that was stabbed to death years ago. And he said that you had something to do with it. You, you didn't stab him, but you helped. And it was outside a pub. Can you remember anything about this? My son's the same age as you. He's just done 33 years in Hampshire, I believe. Oh, has he? Yes. Silly son. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's not very happy, though. No. I'm not either. Aren't you? No, I no. wish you'd have spoken to me. All right, well, look. What's your name? I'll put you on our healing Betty list. Tonkin. Betty Tonkin. Betty. Daryl, you got a pen? I have. Does the name Bremar mean anything to you? Hi, Hi. you were brilliant. Thank um, you very much. Much impressed. Can you give any help to this man here who's yeah. in great turmoil? I, I can tell him quite a lot of things. Yeah. Give us a ring and I'll have a chat to you on the phone. All right. All, all I would say to you, just very quickly, is that you're going down the right track. Did you help somebody that was dying? Did you lose a son in November no, as well? No, daughter. Oh, did you? 1994. 1994, it's the same as Matthew? No. How old was she? 17. Oh, it's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Just wanted to know. Yeah. Right, because the man was adamant. He kept saying the name Bremar. Thank you for a most enjoyable evening. Thank you for saying so, sir. And, uh, Thanks so much. What last time we met up when you were here, you said my right leg would get better and the left one would play up. Guess what? The left one's I had got to sit better, over no. on the left hand side tonight because my left one is strapped up and the right one's better. Oh. When he was in the war, his regiment, he was evacuated from Braemar. And this he's is your father. my father. And he said that there was a lot, of, it could have been somebody during the war that was killed and my dad helped because he said a lot of people were being killed around him. And he was 22 when he was evacuated from this Braemar. So it could have been somebody from away. You know, from the past, I don't know. It's a lovely show, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Show not really being the right word, but you know well, what no, I, mean, I mean, do you? That's the way we describe Experience. them. People often say, oh yeah, well if you're good, then you've got to have plants in the audience. Well, to me, I'd pack it up. If, if I had to go to that, I'm, who am I kidding? At the end of the day, I'm kidding myself. I couldn't be happy with that. I'm too honest to, to feel happy that I'm going to cheat people. And I'm not a cheat. Could you do them over the phone, Keith? I'm the president of this church and have been since 1982. This is also Keith Charles's church. He's frequently here, he does private readings and he demonstrates on many occasions. This is our office. It's the headquarters of the church and it's also the headquarters of our Life After Death promotions. I formed Life After Death promotions with the great Doris Stokes to promote spiritualism around the country. And uh, I'm glad to say in the last 18 to 20 years, this we have done. Well, spiritualism is basically continuation of life after death. And uh, it's a medium's job to prove that there is a life after death. It is to prove survival. It is as simple as that. and there's a long queue of people seeking proof of survival. I do believe in life after death. My mum had cancer for nearly three years and I was 16 when she died. 
and that's the main reason I go to see psychics, is to try and get some contact with my mum. Debbie has been visiting psychics for several years, but believes she has communicated with her mother just once. She hopes a visit to Keith will bring her mum back to her once again. The first time that they brought my mum through, I felt a bit numb. Um, I was a bit shocked as well, because however much I wanted it, I wasn't actually sure it was going to happen. And um, I just sat there and I had just tears rolling down my face. Keith holds his private readings at the church. They can be rather emotional affairs. Are you having a conservatory or an extension built on the back? Because if you say no, I'm going to say to you, you are, because you've been talking about <laughs> extending the back of your house. No? No. The, when you locked up your car mm -hmm. to come here, did you put something in your glove compartment? No. Then what is he talking about? On the other side of the church, Dell is about to enter the busy surgery of a Roman physician. Sorry, Paul. Sorry, yes, sir. I've got the television cameras outside and they just want to sweep round quick if nobody objects. No. Does anybody object? Thank you very much. <laughs> this is our healing sanctuary. At the moment, this is Ray Brown, the famous psychic surgeon and trance healer. But although you can see what you think is Ray Brown there, that is Paul. This is a portrait of Paul. That is Ray Brown's guide. He died some 2,000 years ago. But at this first precise moment, he's here now, working through Mr. Brown. Ray Brown is not there at the moment. He could be out anywhere shopping. <laughs> but that is Paul at the moment. Paul was in the time of Jesus, I believe. On, yes, he walked the earth at the time of Jesus. Yeah. And uh, he's trained to be a doctor in the spirit world now. And he comes back and uh, he is now entranced by Paul. My husband is entranced by Paul and he can see through the body, he can see all the muscles, bones, tissues of the body. He's actually a surgeon. Hey, you man. can speak to Paul if you like. He's uh, very different to my years old. My, I come from the spirit world and I, I train Raymond so that he leaves his body and then I take over his body. I must tell you that although you've just heard Ray speaking, that's not his normal voice. Mm -hmm. When you see him out of trance, he's completely different. You're out of trance now, I mean, and I'm speaking to Ray. Yeah. So can you just explain, you know, what, what's the process of you coming out of trance? Right. <laughs> um, well, basically, I'll go in, into trance first thing in the morning as when we first get here. And I'm out now for me break, which I see is very short now. Um, what actually happens is I sit down and then Paul draws close to me and I step out of my body and he steps in. And I stay here and do my work and when I'm finished, I leave his body, he returns to his body and I go back into the spirit world and get on with my work and he carries on with his life. I had out of the body experiences from around about five years old. He was lifted in and out of his body for some 14 years. And eventually I, I realised that I could move around so I could actually tell my mum what was in my dad's sandwiches and yet I've been put to bed. Before he became a psychic healer, Ray worked as a brickie in Leicester. She said, eh, get a shrink. <laughs> so that's the power of spirit. After a it shaky start, somebody, a it lady. seems Keith is finally is in linking heaven. in with Debbie's mum. This lady has just popped in and he said, she's been waiting to hear from this lady. She said, it's very nice. Is this your mum that he's talking about? Because he said, it's her mum she wants to talk to, not me. Yeah. And she's even wearing her ring, is that right? You got a ring on today? Yeah. And as she comes in, I feel that, I don't know, my, my feeling that as I'm impressed with her, I'm not gonna see my grandchildren grow up in this life, which is something she was thrilled to bits when you had children. This is how she's telling me. But I'm gonna keep an eye on them from heaven. And yes, I do hear you when you talk to me. You spoke to her, didn't you? Yeah. After she passed away. And you whispered in her ear. And you said, I hope you can hear me. This is what she's saying. She said, I love you, Mum. 
What was it that convinced you that it was your mum? Um, the fact that he actually told me it was my mum. Um, before that, he said to me that there was a lady there and she, um, I was wearing a piece of her jewellery, uh, which is my wedding ring, well, her wedding ring, which is now my wedding ring. And um, he said to me, my mum, and he even gave me her name and everything. So that's yeah, straight away I knew. So you totally convinced that she was with totally, you in that room? Totally convinced. In America, there is another woman relying on Keith's spiritual gift. If somebody could tell me exactly what happened to Thomas, when he died, how he died, it would be like an answer to a prayer. In 1998, 26-year-old Thomas Mixon disappeared. His mother has not seen him since. I started searching. I went door to door with pictures of Thomas in his neighborhood, talked to people at the stores, uh, even went so far as to go view a body. And the longer this went on, the more I knew Tom was either being tortured somewhere or he was dead. The police are certain Thomas is dead. They even have a suspect awaiting trial for his murder. But despite that, they have never found his body. The recovery of his remains would be vital evidence for the police and bring huge comfort to his mother. Oh, you grieve. Excuse me. You grieve over it. You scream, you walk the floors. You do a lot of that, but there's no answers. Nancy is hoping Keith Charles can provide those answers. Psychically, it's the ultimate test to find the body of her murdered son. It's been almost three years since TJ Mixon was murdered in Buffalo, New York State, but the police have never found his body. Since his retirement from the British police, Keith Charles has been forging links with forces abroad. Six months ago, he met detectives working on TJ's murder in America. They told him nothing about the case, but were curious enough to test his psychic claims and handed him a photograph of TJ. Immediately I was given this photograph, I was aware of this almost like energy force of his spirit uh, who told me that he was dead. Keith says he received further psychic messages directly from TJ, which he then passed on to the police. TJ told Keith of a fire at the back of a warehouse. He even said the police had recovered his shoe from the ashes of this fire. And I was seeing being given the information by TJ of where this was, even to the fact that he said that the particular officer I was speaking to had actually walked over where this man's body had been. Keith was proved right. The warehouse, fire and shoe all existed. The Buffalo police asked him to work with them on the case, but at the time, Keith wasn't able to extend his stay in America. I think the fact that uh, Keith is a former police detective gives him some more credibility in the eyes of uh, the police officers that would work with him. Uh, I think it's unusual for a police officer to claim to have psychic abilities. Um, again, we're anxious to see you know, whether, whether Keith is able to help us out or not. Ever since I was a young girl, I believed that psychics and some people are blessed with extraordinary powers that are able to communicate with the dead. Six months later, Keith has offered to return to Buffalo. He believes he can contact TJ again and lead detectives to his body. Our hopes with Keith are just astronomically high right now. I just feel like God brought Keith into our lives and that I truly feel he's gonna be able to give us the answers for closure. If he's gifted enough to give us Thomas back, I wanna to try to end it and go on with my life. It's the opportunity Keith has been waiting for. During his career in the British police, senior officers were unwilling to accept his psychic powers. 
It meant that he rarely used his gift, and even then only unofficially. It was very frustrating because there was a lot of prejudice against mediums in the same way that perhaps we look at the analogy of homosexuals and you go back 20 years and they perhaps had to keep it under lock and key and it wasn't as accepted as it is now. I mean, we deal in hard facts. I mean, uh, everything we have to do has got to be uh, accountable. If some medium was to say, I think there's a body underneath a housing estate, where in the estate? Where's the evidence? How do we go and approach that? We can't go and dig up uh, a, a car park or say to somebody, I'm sorry enough, knock your house down. And I just wish the British police force could perhaps undo the top button on their car a little bit, just relax a little bit. Uh, I'm not asking them to become naked, I'm just asking them just to relax a little bit and give us a go. You think slow bollocks really, don't you? <laughs> no, I keep an open mind. I will never ever answer that question. Tim T.J. Mixon. The force should be on his side since Keith believes America is his spiritual home. He claims that in a previous life he existed as a Confederate soldier who was killed fighting in the Civil War. Cops, by their very nature, are uh, somewhat skeptical of, of this type of thing. Um, but we will be open-minded, and if Keith can lead us to that body, I'd be absolutely thrilled. Pleased to meet you. Keith's That's wife, great. Christine, has Hi. made the trip from England with him. Keith begins yeah, by recapturing the original the psychic vision he had of the warehouse to to on his last visit. Hopefully the police have told him nothing about the case. I was very much aware, what I described as the warehouse, and coming out where there was a fire at the back, and then as I saw it, going out from the back of there, a manhole or a covering uh, in the, wouldn't call it undergrowth, but grass or dirt or whatever, which I'd like to sort of see. If, if, as you get close to certain areas, do your impressions become stronger? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. And that's why I was hoping that maybe if we went, what I call it, on the ground. So if we went there, you could yeah. tell. I would, you think I would you either say yes, we're on the right. If we're in the right spot no, that you're thinking of? Yeah. Sorry, could I ask Jim, just before we go, did you search a warehouse, please? Yeah. Yeah. But that's all he's getting. Once Keith is out of earshot, the significance of the warehouse they are about to visit okay. is revealed. The defendant in the case had access to this warehouse, and it's just a, a, a we feel it would be a good location to um, dispose of a body. There's no way Keith could have known the relevance of a warehouse? No, not that we know of. Keith has several spirit guides who help him contact the dead. There's Corinda, a Mongolian warrior, Charlie, a 17th century London barrow boy, and today it's Tobias, a Spanish monk. Tobias is a um, guardian angel, if you like. And he lived on this earth as a monk years ago. A bit like a modern day CAD file, really, <laughs> you know. But he's, uh, he's somebody that helps me. He's my guardian angel. But hopefully we'll be able to, if TJ's available, link in to TJ, the victim in this case. When I'm aware of a contact, I just start to feel excited. When, when you get really close, you start to feel um, like perhaps having a cold sh uh, shower or electric shock going through you. There's just a change in sensations that the body has. I get the words liquor store, I don't know why. I get the words liquor store. Um, feel the goose pimples starting to build up, so we must be getting close now. As a test, Jim deliberately drives past the warehouse, hoping Keith will tell him he's gone too far. Turn around and go back. I actually 
past the place. Yeah. There's a liquor store if there's one there. Detectives first searched the warehouse several months ago. So let me uh, go and see if they're They called it TJ's. It's unbelievable, it's isn't it? I'm walking in there and straight away I'm aware of spirit. Straight away. I'm just aware of spirit. I'm just aware. I don't know if there's a sink or something under there, um, but I'm looking for a wash area. Oh, this is a wash area, yeah. So it's under the. That's how I sort of imagined it, you know, being underneath a wall, behind a wall. I just did it, you know, I just drove by. And then, when, then I turned around when I came back to see if he was going to get, you know, say, I'll oh, turn around or something, but he didn't. But he was also a answering a question. They asked him a question about that time, and he was talking. So I don't know if he lost his uh, train of thought or what. But yeah. on his way here, when we were on Sycamore a couple blocks away, he started feeling. He started having the feeling. I don't know. You've just taken over, have you, Terry? I've been here for a while. Was, I, I can see that's obviously knocked down. It might be because you had to wind it for cut. But was there a smaller entrance as well? No. No? Are you sure? There's, there's not a... What's that then? That's new brickwork. There was another area there at some time. I didn't tell him yet, but that door was smaller. This is where the... When we were, Snaker was found, yeah. right? Last time we were here, this was a little different, but it was basically like that. It was stuff you could tell they'd burned. Right. And were there, were there During his last fairly visit to large, Buffalo, heavy pieces Keith wood, told like, the police they'd recovered a shoe from, like from a fire pit at the we warehouse. This, yeah. February. this is the actual pit a they took part of a training shoe fire. from. Okay. Clothing was burnt here. How'd you know? I know. I know, I can see it. Jeans, jeans were burnt here. Cat was thrown over that way. I'm almost, almost like I'm here. It's almost like it's. A, it, I don't know. I'm here. Either the body or the weapons here that was used to kill him. They disposed of this weapon, which was a knife here. That's. It was a machete. Pardon? It was a machete. Oh, he used to have a machete about this long. Oh, in his yeah. truck. Yeah, and he used to keep it in his pickup. Underneath the seat. And did it have a curve on the end? Yep. Was it curved? Do you remember me telling you? The blade curved up. And where's, do we know where that is? The truck's gone. Keith has already told detectives a curved knife and a pickup truck are connected with the murder. The, end, the back entrance actually comes from the, up the side street here. I need to ask you something, Jim. Please don't think I'm off my head. No. I said to you originally that you've walked over my body. Do you remember when TJ, right, right in the I said you've walked over my body. And I just feel this, where we are today, is where TJ was either disposed of or his clothing and everything else was disposed of. This is to me, if not the prime murder scene, I just want to call it a murder scene. Keith has become intent on finding a drain or manhole cover. He believes either a weapon or TJ's body could be underneath it. What I'm looking for is a drain or some sort of drain up this area. That's, to be honest, what I feel at the moment. There's got to be a drain somewhere. I just want to find this drain. Uh, how about right here? A little drain. My image is just of a, what I call a manhole cover. You know that big? I still cannot get away from what I see as a mano cover, so I want to sort of collect my thoughts and go back to where I see this mano cover. This, uh, so, the only thing we thought of possibly, but he this, said that this never was open anyway. This was a, probably the old drain for here, you know, the... Yeah.
At the warehouse, Keith is about to search a drain for the body of murder victim TJ Mixon. Yep, they had come up anyway, so clean it out. Yeah. Looks like there's another grid under there. Not another drain, is it? Small one. Hmm. I wouldn't mind, you know, thinking there must be something yeah. perhaps under there. To peer down there is going to cost nothing, is it? You know, just to look down the drain. If there's nothing there, there's nothing there. But, uh, but Detective Giardina believes the drain hasn't been be, disturbed yeah. for several years and won't take the search any further. I'm just interested in that I would probably sift this, you know, take this up very clo closely just in case there was something in there. Has, 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 a, has a sniffer dog been brought to this premises before? Yes. You know, negative results, he didn't find anything. Drains are important here. That's, that's what I get. But it's not Keith's investigation, and if the Americans refuse to continue with the search, there's little he can do. Oh. Spiritually and psychically, I'm left here at a scene as where the last dealings with TJ were. I know there was two men involved, I know they were in a truck, they had been out and they have been doing some drug dealing. I believe TJ had ripped them off. They would lost their temper. And in a peak of temper, he'd killed him. Keith has got some details correct. But much of what he has said cannot be verified until the body is found or the killer confesses. You know, some things are close, but not exactly the way, uh, the way we understand them. You know, it does, doesn't mean we're right, doesn't mean, you know, He's wrong. But he hasn't found the body. TJ's mother has been pinning her hopes on Keith being able to find her son. I want to tell you that when I was at the police station, your son contacted me and that he tells me he's now in heaven. And if I could say to you, which is, sounds perhaps a little bit dismissive, it's not meant to be, that he's in a far better place now, and that he's quite happy and he's quite well, that's what I feel I want to say to you. And I was drawn very much to a warehouse, and we've actually been there, and I felt TJ was telling me this was the last place that he was taken. Do you mind me talking about this? No. no. I don't want to upset you. I don't want to. Put everything out. You sure? I mean, that's what we. Okay. Uh, that's what we wait on. Like you, I've lost a son. My son Matthew was 20 when he was killed in a road accident. So, as a father, I can share your loss as a mother. What I don't have is that extra grief because you don't know about your son. All I want to tell you, as a responsible man, that he's quite happy in heaven, that he has started a new life. The following day, Keith has begun to reflect on his failure to find the body. He believes the American police are partly to blame. I feel that they have been somewhat guarded with their own truth in what they've told me, the investigators, which has been nothing, as far as I'm concerned. They've not told me a thing. He described a small curved knife. They, they described it as a long machete type knife. When he came to visit us several months ago, and he mentioned a knife then, but he described it as a black handled knife, um, which was used for stripping. Now, I don't know exactly what kind of a knife that, that would be, but it doesn't sound like it would be a machete. I've been to a warehouse that I saw that was given to me by spirit. I described it, the ingredients were there, everything was there. I can only give that to the police and say, look, I'm drawn to go in there. You now get on and do your bit of work. And they, that area was searched pretty thoroughly on two occasions. And we had a, uh, a dog that has a, a pretty well-proven track record for corpses that are buried in the ground. I know that those policemen will only accept it when I do say, open that door and there's a body. I would have loved to have come here and found that body or evidence that would tangibly prove where that body is. 
I believe we can still do that at the warehouse. I honestly believe there is evidence there that will say that's where his body was disposed of. I remain uh, somewhat skeptical because I still haven't seen any, any type of tangible proof um, that uh, uh, psychic ability worked in this case. People will make up their own mind when they see this, what they think of me. I'm telling you how I see it, and I see it that I've passed the test. <laughs> Saturday evening back in South London. He swaps the world of psychic investigation for a night out of the day. The track is a regular one. Keith even has his own greyhound called Enjoy Your Luck, racing later. It's all in keeping with the image he wants to promote, that of a modern day psychic. I would say that as regards the general feeling, probably 10 years ago about mediums and psychics, was that perhaps they're a little bit screwy. Three dogs, 60 to 20, 42. We have a job to prove there's a life after death. And that life after death doesn't affect me getting on with my daily life. I'll come to the dogs, I'll go out and have a curry, I'll go to the cinema, I'll go to rock concerts. I just consider myself a man in the street, that's all, with, with perhaps a special gift. It'd be lovely, I'm sure people are sitting at home and saying, oh, he must have picked every winner then because the spirits are going to give him every winner. But it's not like that at all. My, my gift is not to go out to make money. And, and if I did, I might just discard my gift, which would be very wrong. You know, I could perhaps pick six numbers on the lottery, be very happy myself, but that's not what God's given me the gift for. He's given it to share with people. Claire is another who's turned to Keith in the hope he can help her move forward. I had a miscarriage in October of last year and I'm hoping that when I go that I will get the baby come through. Just comfort for myself to know that it has gone on, that it is still living and I know that if it is up there my granddad's looking after it. If, if my baby comes through I will be comforted, I will be um, happy. It was a very hard thing to go through, to lose, and still grieving now. So I'm hoping that if it comes through, that it'll be a good reading and, yeah, it'll give me fulfilment to know that it's OK. For me, if it's an emotional matter that is very deep within me and I can't find the answer within myself, yeah, then I will go and see Keith, yeah. Cello was so impressed with his last visit to Keith, he's decided to book in again. He um, told me my number my house and where it was si situated and how many kids I've got. And same time, he named some numbers of, uh, which at that time when I was seeing him, didn't really uh, pay, any, I didn't pay any attention to it. But after, those numbers was of houses that I know people who live at. There's, no, there's nothing I can say, it's not a charlatan, he is the real deal, that he's the man. There's many people say that years ago everybody was psychic, and probably everybody is psychic now, but it's bringing it out, bringing it to the forefront, so that you know. Do, uh, do you have psychic ability? I hope so, I think I have, yes, yes. Yes, not as great as Keith and other people, but yes, I have psychic abilities. And I just want to say, how's his leg? Because he's had a bit of a bad leg, your other half. What did he do to his left ankle? Uh, his dad. Huh? That was my dad. Was it? Yeah. It was your dad's left yeah. ankle? I do apologise. She's more confident and set. She's older than you, is she? Younger. Younger. Now, your mum, right, was 
quite affected by the, your dad's passing. Is your first name nine letters? No. No? No. Where is... No. Is there somebody else in your mum's life? Because I want to say to you, I don't know if she's got a partner at the moment, but he, let me just tell you what he's saying, he's not jealous, all right? No. And if she hasn't got a partner, she's got a very good man friend, if you know what I mean. And I don't mean that Rudely, does that make sense? She's still married to my dad. It's my granddad that's, I think, communicating with you. Well, who? Sorry, I've got this wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can't, can't have that because I'm wrong. It's almost. I, I would be insulting you oh, to try and get it, but it, it, it's something like Shadawa no, or something. No. Do, do, do you see what I mean? What? All right, I'm I mean, wrong, but I'm saying I'd be insulting. What is it? Salvanize. Chauvinet. Yeah. Well, I, I was getting something like Shadawa, yeah, right? right? So I'm, I'm just telling you. Yeah. Your grandmother, right, she would have passed over. No, that's um, probably his mum. My granddad's mum that's living. No, 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 no. Let's no. start again. Okay. No, I want to get this right, yeah. right? I can be <laughs> wrong and I can be very wrong and I'm not very wrong. Right. I'm wrong about your mum and dad. Right, yeah. I accept that. Keith claims the reason he isn't always spot on is because the voices he hears and the pictures he sees sometimes don't present themselves as clearly as he would like. But halfway through Claire's reading, spirit contact grows stronger. Would this be your child? Because I want, yeah. Yeah. I want to say, correct myself, and he's saying, it's not my child, it's her child. So forgive me. Um, so he's looking after your baby. I want to say your baby. Um, and I want to say to you that I'm very much aware of my head with this baby, all right? The condition that took the child over. Sorry, I don't mean to upset you. All right. The reading went absolutely brilliant. Um, my granddad's come through, the baby's come through, everything I'd hoped for has come through. Are you surprised? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if it would happen, but it has. I've come out very happy. I would like to think that I'm a responsible medium and psychic. Um, I would hope that I give people the best evidence I can of a life beyond this one. It's not my job to run their life for them. And he is saying to me, right, that this won't be bad. It will be a struggle, but you will be pleased with the results. Because I want to say to you, the black that I saw was in the past. If I set myself up as a god, that would be totally irresponsible. And he wants to say, I love my son. Thank you. I'm not there to preach at them, I'm just there hopefully to establish a link with a loved one that they've lost. He said, and I'm very proud the way you've coped. Mm -hmm. He said, and I know it left you really devastated when he passed. May God look after you, take care of you, and God bless you. Thank you very much indeed. Good night, God bless you. Thank you. I mean, we don't want to die, do we? But we know we've got to die. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything to be frightened of. This no. is my opinion. No, we can it? accept um, coming to an end easier. Yeah. Than what we would have done had we not uh, gone through this stage with Keith. He's put our mind at ease more. <laughs>